Good evening. So welcome to St. Jude. And uh, please note the bishop, he continues to strongly encourage, encourage those present to wear face coverings during the liturgy. If you are worshiping with us you, in person, you can scan the QR codes located on the doors to the sanctuary. Uh, that would be using your camera on your phone, and that will help you access this weekend's worship aid. If you are worshiping with us via the live stream, you can find the worship aid online. A link is available on our, web page, our, our website homepage. So again, welcome, and Mass will begin in just a few moments. of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In our gospel this evening, we hear Jesus say, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. So with confident hearts, we prepare, we, we prepare them to enter these sacred mysteries of God's love. We do so by recalling to mind our sins and asking the Lord for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, 
forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Oreb, Elijah, came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Grant us. 
bless your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in all and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness, and grant us your salvation. Himself will give his benefits, our land shall yield its increase, justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ, I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are the Israelites, there's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Alleluia, alleluia. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for his word. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came forward toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. 
At once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and called Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus tells his disciples when things are rough in the water, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. On a human level, the disciples had reasons to worry. They were being tossed about in a major storm in a small boat. And they were thinking they saw a ghost coming toward them on the sea. Yet it was Jesus. They can take courage and not be afraid. For he, the Savior, the Messiah, was with them. These words of Jesus found in our scriptures are consoling words that we too have heard many times in our lives. We could say many times and in many different ways when faced with difficult situations or trying times. In moments of weakness, of fatigue, in difficult situations, Jesus reveals himself to us. Take courage. It is I, I am with you. Do not be afraid. Jesus is in our midst and how comforting it is to realize this fact. Peter, the apostle, can teach us some important things about faith by watching him in this gospel story. He shows great signs of faith, but he also shows signs of a hesitant faith. Peter first had great faith and wanted to do what Jesus did, to walk on water and trusted Jesus would enable him to do so. So we see in childlike faith, Peter steps out and starts walking. Next comes though the realization of his accomplishment and he starts to think what he is doing, walking in very strong winds and choppy water. And he forgets to focus not on what God is doing for him, but on what he is doing. And in the tossing of the waves, Peter's courage becomes weak, his faith, and he begins to sink. Yet we see, even though he, in that lack of faith, he starts to sink, we see another act of faith come from Peter that will again save him. He cries out not to his friends in the boat, but he cries out again to Jesus, Lord, save me. And Jesus does save Peter and his from his anxiety, and soon they are both in the boat with winds calm. So this firm faith, and then we see a hesitant faith or a weak faith, is a common pattern for this disciple, Peter. If we remember, he is the head of the apostles. We could say he's the greatest disciple, the one Jesus has chosen. And yet we see throughout his life, he does have those great acts of faith, but then he also has times of that hesitant faith. 
In the not too distant future, Peter would again show a hesitant faith. Being surrounded by Jesus's opponents, Peter would once again sink in faith and deny, know, deny knowing Jesus. Yet he returns once again to follow Jesus and ultimately will give the greatest testimony to his faith by being a martyr. Peter always returned to Jesus after his times of weak faith. He always returned. And I think that's the message for all of us. We're probably going to be like Peter. At times we're going to have great faith. At times we'll have that faith be weakened or challenged or we're not the best. But like Peter, we are called to always return, always return once again to the Lord. At times our faith is strong, and at times our faith becomes hesitant. But we recognize that we too can listen to that message. It is I, Jesus, I am in your midst. Take courage, do not be afraid. When our faith is weak, the hand of Christ is there to catch us. And even if we begin to sink, we know that Christ will raise us up. So this is during those difficult times, those storms in our life. But we see in our first reading that Jesus is also there in the quiet times and the calm times in our life. Elijah, in our first reading, shows us that we can find God in the tiny whisper. That is when Elijah was able to hear Jesus. God's presence was noticed not in the earthquake or the fire or the strong and heavy wind, though we know that God is everywhere. But for Elijah, he could hear the Lord's presence in that tiny whispering sound. So let us be aware of Jesus in both places. He is there in the storms of life. He is present, as well as in those quiet times, which are important for us to have in our busy world. Both complement, I think, each other. We have to know God present in both areas. So our life right now, if it is stormy or if it is in quiet, let us know that God wants us to notice him. Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. For he is here and he wants us to know he is with us as his disciples. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus encouraged the wavering faith of, G of, of Peter, 
Let us ask him to strengthen us and to raise us up to him through these, our prayers. For the household of God on earth, visibly united around the true successors of Peter and the apostles, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice and peace in our nation, especially where civil strife divides our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For turning to Christ our Savior for peace in our lives, instead of becoming victims of fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID-19 virus and for healing for all those who have it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are not able to receive the precious body and blood of our Lord during this time, that they may feel his presence within them through prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and who are dying, and for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Barbara Koblitz, Dr. Remiglio Padlin, Carolina Kerr, Dr. Ralph Tierney, Lenora O'Connor, Mary Helena Musig, Jimmy Abel, Michael Bell, Tom George Baraldi, Mary Baker, Glory Stack, Betty Jane Hutchinson, Kelly Hancock, and Joseph Anaya. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our, ma <clears throat> our Mass intention, the repose of the soul, Teresa Don Tai Hall. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as you receive the prayers that we bring you this evening, grant us a strong faith through them. We ask these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transformed them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Blessed is he who comes in the name of 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. spread and drink this cup we, we proclaim, proclaim your death O Lord until you come again therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who are Catholic and are receiving communion today, please note the following. You are strongly encouraged to receive communion on the hand. Please stay six feet apart as you come up for communion, which is about two pews apart. We will have one line going up for communion to keep the six feet distance, and we will have one side of the pews go first. Please follow the usher's directions.
masked by these bare shadows, shape and nothing more. See, Lord, at thy service, low lies here a heart, lost all lost in wonder at the God thou tasting are in the deceived how says trusty hearing that shall be believed what God's son has told me take for truth I do truth himself speaks true For those of you at home, let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please not let, do not let me ever be separated from you. We do have the following announcements. As you exit Mass today, please take your time and strive to maintain social distance. 
We ask you please to exit in order for us to begin cleaning for uh, tomorrow morning's mass. And we want to thank those who have been able to support us these last few months during the closing of Sunday Masses and those that continue to do so. As a reminder, we do have collection baskets and money boxes by the baptismal font, by the west transept and the east transept doors. Without Sunday Masses and the effects of COVID, our collections are down. So we are making adjustments in our budget. Along with many parishes throughout the diocese, St. Jude will be offering young adults rise small groups. This is for those 18 to 39 years old. The small groups are tailored to the different stages of life, such as married, single, and parents. The first season focuses on ordinary time of the church and, the meet, and meeting the saints. So see the website for more information on Rye Small Groups. Again, that's for young adults. And registration is due by August 17th. If you have a child in religious education, registrations are now being accepted. Please remember that the sacramental preparation is a two-year process. Religious education this fall will be online, but it is still important to register so that curriculum can be ordered. And we will be hosting a blood drive on Sunday, August 23rd. There is a critical shortage for blood. And to donate, you must register and schedule an appointment online through Carter Blood Bank site. Please note that if you do donate blood this time, Carter Blood Bank will test for COVID-19 antibodies. Uh, again, signups on the website are required, and the last day to sign up is August 22nd. Let us stand and pray. May the communion and your sacrament that we have consumed, save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Good job.